Crop Production Introduction Food is the main source of energy and nutrition for all organisms, including human beings. This explains the importance of food in our life. We obtain food from plants and animals. Food from plants Any plant that is cultivated on a large scale for food or any other use is called a crop. Food products obtained from crop plants are listed out in the table. Crop Production To ensure a good crop yield, farmers carry out certain activities in a particular sequence till the crops mature at harvest. These activities are called agricultural practices. A sequential listing of agricultural practices is given in the flowchart shown on your screen. To understand the importance of agricultural practices, follow the wheat grains in figure in their journey from a seed to a big plant and then back to a seed. Preparation of soil. Soil is the main medium in which plants grow. Plants absorb water, nutrients and mineral salts from the soil. It is therefore important to prepare the soil well to ensure a healthy produce. Ploughing. Soil is tilled with the help of tools called ploughs. Ploughs and other tools needed for large-scale production of crops are called agricultural implements. Ploughs are either drawn by bullocks or driven by tractors. The two main type of ploughs employed for tilling are wooden ploughs and iron ploughs. Loosening of the soil is important because loose soil particles have air spaces which help the roots to breathe. Loose soil retains moisture for a longer duration. Loosening of soil helps to remove weeds and other undesirable plants in the field. Loose soil mixes well with manure and absorbs fertilizers more easily. Roots of plants reach deeper in loose soil. This helps to fix the plant more firmly. Friendly earthworms The activity of earthworms is important to farmers because they improve soil structure, mix and till the soil, aid in humus formation and increase the availability of plant nutrients. Leveling Tilled, ploughed soil may have big blocks of soil which need to be crushed. Therefore, after tilling, the soil needs to be levelled properly. Levelling of soil is done with the help of a wooden or iron leveller. Applying fertilisers Fertilisers are natural or chemical substances which contain one or more nutrients essential for plant growth. Natural fertilisers An example of natural fertiliser is manure. Manure refers to the solid or liquid organic matter derived from animal wastes and plant residues. Bone meal, a mixture of crushed and coarsely ground bones. Neem kikal, bark of neem and compost are some commonly used natural fertilizers. Chemical fertilizers. Chemical fertilizers are manufactured in factories. The most commonly used inorganic fertilizers are the NPK fertilizers, which are rich in nitrogen, N, phosphorus, P, and potassium, K. Chemical fertilizers are popular with farmers because most of them are soluble in water and can be readily absorbed by plants. Fertilizers are usually applied either by spraying or through irrigation channels. Harmful effects of fertilizers. Can you guess what would happen if inorganic chemical fertilizers are used in excess? You may be surprised to know that fertilizers sprayed in excess on agricultural land can find their way into water bodies and this may adversely affect aquatic animals. This happens by a process called eutrophication. Sowing of seeds. Manual sowing. Seeds are sown manually by directly sprinkling them into the soil. This process is called broadcasting. Seeds sown in this manner are unevenly distributed in the field. Using seed drills. 
A seed drill has an attachment which can be either bullock drawn or driven by a tractor. Seeds sown with a seed drill are evenly distributed. The only drawback of a seed drill is that it is made of iron, hence needs a lot of maintenance to prevent rusting. These are the steps to be followed while sowing the seeds. Separation of seeds Aim To separate healthy seeds from unhealthy ones. Materials required A beaker, water and wheat grains. Procedure Take a beaker filled with water. Put some wheat grains in the beaker and leave the setup standing for some time. Watch carefully. You will observe that some seeds settle down while some float on the water surface. The seeds that float on the water surface are lighter because they may be infested by insects. Hence, we should use the ones settled at the bottom. Seeds sown in nurseries. Seeds of some crops like rice, tomato and brinjal are not planted directly in the main fields. They are first sown in a smaller plot called a nursery. Once the seeds germinate and become seedlings, they are transplanted manually to the main fields. Seedlings are sown at an appropriate distance from one another to avoid overcrowding. Scarecrows Sown seeds and even crops need to be protected from birds and rodents. Birds are a big menace since they can eat away sown seeds. It is for this reason that farmers need to place scarecrows in the fields. A scarecrow is an image or an effigy in the shape of a human being that is placed in fields to frighten away birds. Irrigation Irrigation refers to the artificial watering of crops. Water for irrigation is obtained from sources such as wells, rivers, reservoirs and lakes. Fields may be watered by means of canals, furrows, tube wells and sprinkler systems. Water may also be pumped using electric water pumps. Water requirements differ from crop to crop. For instance, crops such as paddy need a constant supply of water. Wheat, on the other hand, requires water at regular intervals during its growth. Weeding Sometimes undesirable plants start growing next to the planted crops. These undesirable plants are called weeds. The need for removing weeds arises because weeds compete with the crops for water, sunlight and nutrients, thus reducing crop produce. Some of the commonly occurring weeds are amaranthus, cholai, wild oat, grass and chenopodium, bautwa. The process of removing weeds is called weeding. This may be done manually or by spraying weedicides. Pests Organisms that attack and spoil crops are called pests. Some of the commonly occurring pests are birds, rats and squirrels and insects such as grasshoppers, weevils, locusts, aphids and termites. The chemicals used to destroy pests are called pesticides. Common pests that attack crop plants Of all the pests that attack crop plants, insects are the most common and they cause maximum damage. Many of them also transmit viral, bacterial and fungal diseases to plants. Some common crop pests are shown in the figure. Insects like the locust descend on crops in huge swarms and eat away the leaves and soft parts. Aphids and leaf hoppers suck plant juices. Stem borer drill holes in plants. Beetles chew away plant parts. Weevils complete the major part of their life cycle among stored grain and cause extensive losses. Termites and white ants attack the roots of crop plants. Most insect pests 
are controlled by spraying insecticides. Use of herbicides. Any agent or a chemical substance that destroys weeds and helps control their growth is called a herbicide. Crops are also protected from insects and diseases with the help of insecticides and fungicides. Harvesting of crops. Once the crops are mature, farmers cut and gather them. The process of cutting and gathering of crops is called harvesting. The harvest period differs from crop to crop. Harvesting of cereal crops is done either manually with the help of a sickle or with the help of a machine called harvester attached to a tractor. Fruits and vegetables are generally hand-picked when ripe. Threshing and winnowing. After harvesting, the grains have to be separated from the cut crop. The process of beating out the grain from the crop is called threshing. Threshing can be done manually or with the help of a machine called thresher. After harvesting, the grains have to be separated from the chaff. Chaff is the material consisting of seed coverings and small pieces of stem or leaves that have been separated from the seeds. Separation of grains from the chaff can be carried out by the process of winnowing. In this process, the grain chaff mixture is gradually dropped on the ground from a height. The chaff being lighter is blown away by the wind and thus gets separated from the grain. Storage of crops. Once the grains are separated from the chaff, they need to be stored before they are made available for use and consumption. Since moisture encourages microbial growth, it is necessary to ensure that both the grains and the storage area are free of moisture. They are weighed, packed in gunny bags and stored in go-downs as shown. Hybridization and emasculation When two dissimilar types of plants are crossed, that is, mated, the resulting plant, which has some characteristics of both the parent plants, is called the hybrid variety. The process of crossing genetically dissimilar plants is called hybridization. Emasculation is a hybridization technique which involves self-pollination in plants. In this technique, the anthers from flowers of one desirable variety are removed, that is, emasculated, to allow pollens from the second desirable variety of flowers to land on the stigma of the emasculated flowers. This process is continued for several generations to obtain a new variety of seeds called the hybrid variety which possesses the desirable characteristics of both the parent plants. Crop rotation Crop rotation is the practice of growing two or more dissimilar crops on the same patch of land one after the other. For example, crops such as wheat and paddy use up a lot of nitrogen from the soil. Thus, the soil becomes deficient in nitrogen after the crop is harvested. This can be replenished naturally if leguminous plants such as peas, soya beans or green beans that are sown after wheat or paddy. Biological Nitrogen Nitrogen is an essential nutrient for life as it is needed for the formation of many biological molecules such as amino acids, proteins and nucleic acids. Nitrogen occurs in the atmosphere as nitrogen gas. Nitrogen is the most limiting nutrient for plant growth because most plants can only take up nitrogen in two forms, ammonium ion and nitrate ion. This is accomplished through nitrogen cycle in which gaseous nitrogen is converted to ammonia and subsequently into other biological compounds. Nitrogen cycle is a natural cyclic process in which atmospheric nitrogen enters the soil and becomes a part of living organisms before returning to the atmosphere. Food from animals We obtain different kinds of food items and many other products such as wool and silk from animals. Rearing of animals on a large scale is called animal husbandry. 
we obtain milk from animals such as cows, buffaloes and goats. Milk yielding animals are also called milk animals. Milk is used to prepare a variety of dairy products such as butter, ghee, curd and cheese. Poultry animals such as chicken, cocks, turkey and geese yield eggs. In addition, the flesh of animals such as goat, chicken and fish is also eaten as food. Large-scale rearing and production of fish is called physiculture. Fish is a nutritious food rich in proteins and vitamins A and D. Cod liver oil and shark liver oil obtained from fish are a rich source of proteins. Large-scale rearing of honeybees is called apiculture. Honey also has medicinal values.